Well, how you start a painting may be just as important as how you finish it. Not maybe, I think it really is. We're going to explore a couple of unique ways to start. Really sort of the line and wash genre, so we're starting with a line, sort of. But we're going to have some fun with it. Follow along and let's see what we can do, starting with a line. Am I going to let you paint today? No. I have to hold you the whole time. Hello, 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 minders. Welcome to a painting video. Actually, this is the first painting video of 2024. I've done the one on composition, which that was fun to do, and got some great comments, by the way, some great feedback. Uh, so I'm preparing to do some painting. I'm gonna do some studies. What I'm doing right here is just cutting a little protective window out of some Bristol board. This is Arsh. This is their 300 pound block. That's why it's the blue instead of the typical green color. So this is their heavy paper. This is the, the, the heavy stuff, the good stuff. Well, it's all good stuff, <laughs> but this is not going to buckle. So I've got this blocked off into four. We're gonna do at least two today, probably reserve two for patrons. And all I'm doing here is I'm just cutting a protective window splashing I, I don't know we're gonna get into stuff so i can do it this way i can do it this way i can do it this way and this way and i'll probably just tape it down a little bit so let us start with this one and then i will tell you what i'm doing or what i'm attempting to do everything is an attempt you know thankfully enough of them are successful that i keep attempting and i'm doing that again today so we're going to be experimenting with starts and how you start a painting. So what do we do when we start a painting? Well, we'll wet the whole thing. That's always great. Or we'll just start in with some washes, maybe spray it. Sometimes uh, we may do a line and wash, so it will be drawn. Well, we're gonna go for sort of a linear start, much the way you would do a line and wash with line first. However, the line is not gonna be traditional. And that's what I wanted to play with today. I wanna start with some very expressive lines. This will not be completely spontaneous because what I have are several compositions that I've been wanting to dive into. And maybe uh, these were, for instance, were intended to be paintings. I got that set. Uh, I have this set. I have this set. With some really neat ones here. Uh, so I'm going to be picking some compositions and painting to those compositions. I actually think I want to start here and maybe this one. However, instead of these broad washes, I'm going to start with lines and lines created in very unique ways. So let me show you what I'm planning. I've got a stick, a little bamboo stick here, and I think we're going to use some ink. I have uh, a few colors of Liquitex acrylic ink. So we'll probably try applying some with stick. I have an India ink brush pen. I have an art graph graphite stick. This is water soluble graphite. And I have these art graph chalks uh, and these are shaped like Taylor's chalk. So you can draw on the corner, you can draw on the edge, you can uh, put down on the flat and sort of chisel in some shapes and get some unique mark making that way. But my goal is gonna to be to keep it linear to begin with. Then we'll go in and add washes the way you would wash over line. We'll see how this is all gonna work. Let's go with this composition here. We're gonna start with the bamboo stick and the Liquitex ink. And I might even employ, I've got these little kind of paper stubs here I've used before. I might even use this to pull uh, the line in some ways, I don't know. And I am going to be dipping directly into the bottle with the stick and probably allowing myself to do a little bit of spatter. I'm going to keep these marks fairly uh, expressive, as I mentioned. Um, there's a number of ways you can do that. You can hold it way back towards the back. Another way is to maybe don't pick up your, your stick. Just move with it in a, in a random way, sort of connect the line 
uh, deal. I like little uh, nexus points that might create a visual center. And I think the, the point is to don't overdo it. Let's just see what happens if I spatter it. That's cool. It's kind of fuzzing the line in places. That's, that's what I was kind of hoping would happen. Let me see if I can pull any of that with this paper. You know, and the reason not to use a brush here is, again, just those interesting organic shapes. And we'll get, don't worry, you know, we'll get tight and representational with this later. See how violet that is? I don't know how they call that gray. The Liquitex inks are really nice. I, I like them. We have a little bit of water on the paper now. Let's go back with some more line. And that line is going to hit that water in places. And hopefully do some really cool things. And my uh, the composition that I'm working to goes off the top. And I like that. And it goes off the bottom in spots. I don't have to stick again to it precisely, but... stand of trees there and I have sort of a, a hill back here in some really dark places I like that I'm, I'm, I'm quickly reaching the point where I'm liable to overdo it and get too many strokes and busyness too much busyness on the paper let me see let me pull some of this a little bit I can fill out that composition more with paint as we go. This is a really fun, I'll tell you, just uh, what this line will do. Oh, and I, I think, I didn't mention this, I think the, the brush pen with the black would be the one thing that I am allowing myself to use in any of them. This is like sort of the common one. And I'm going to use this just where I want it. Really, really dark. Because it is jet black. And all of this, uh, what's cool, and the reason I'm doing this, is all of this will dry permanently. So washes that will be put over this with watercolor uh, will not lift this or move this. So hopefully you can see those dark spots there. That actually looks so much more cooler than even I was expecting. <laughs> All right, that's just bringing some, some dark contrast to these center focal areas. I really think I might be overdoing it if I go any further. So let's let that completely dry. All right, let's go on to number two, and I'm going to do all the line work first. That's how that one dried. Looks pretty cool. We're going to do uh, the line work for this one. And then we'll go back and paint them. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to use the Art Graph color blocks. Now these are all water soluble. So we will not have the same advantage with the ink when we go to watercolor over it. We'll have to keep in mind that that will re-wet and re-lift. I'm going to stay fairly dark. These are the colors. And I'm going to uh, use the dark brown. I might use another color. I'm not sure. Just uh, since, you know, we can lift and rewet and paint with that color. So let's see what happens. Again, I'm gonna start on dry paper and I will probably do some spraying in. Let's use a different composition this time. Let's go over here, let's maybe use something along this line. And I like that we can see those details and we have some sort of rocky texture in the front. Uh, just really picking up the texture of the paper. I think I'm going to be glad that this will re-wet. Let's go ahead and uh, splash some 
spatter on here and see what happens. Yeah, we get that same sort of fuzzy line going on here, which is really very nice. Let's fill in some spots. Well, that just really loosens up when you wet it. Now let's pull our other common element or applicator in here, which I'm gonna use perhaps in all of them. I don't think I'm gonna get another color involved. I'm gonna just stick with this in keeping with the idea that this is line and wash. Let me see if we can get some thinner lines this way. That's kind of cool getting some fainter ones in it at least. Pull up some let's pull up some lines this way. Just gonna try to pick up some of that pigment and stamp it in as if this were a brush. I like the idea of this being rocky texture down here. You, know, you kind of have to fight the urge to just do more. You think, well, I've, I've barely touched this thing, but well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like, when it's enough, it's enough. I don't even know that I need any ink, but you just put it in a few spots. This is the black permanent ink. Maybe let's just draw a few little shapes. I used it for deep little contrast points in the other one, but here, fine line work. Because why not? Composition is turning out to have a lot of similarities to the first one. But that's okay. You know, even if all of these were the very same composition, it's a great way to uh, experiment with some some shapes and application ideas. And again, if you're asking, well, why don't you just take a brush and do some of that? Well, that's coming. I, I will be able to do that. But at this point, um, I'm resisting the urge. I'm just letting uh, these techniques sort of dictate how I put down the initial line. All right, we're gonna stop there and let that one dry. All right, well, there we are. That's both of them dry. I'm really going to have to be careful on this because this is very heavy pigment. It's very rewettable. You can see if I do that. So adding washes back there is going to almost be a paint around. And I think what I'm going to have to do is stick with a color that works well with this, this sort of dark brown sepia. It's going to bring some of it with it. Just testing it here. That way, if I get some of this dark brown in there, it looks like it it blends well. Since I'm most concerned about this one, I'm going to go ahead and paint this one first. This I'm not worried about. That's all ink. I can just splash over that with color any way that I want. So let's get a little more focused over here. It's really amazing how similar these compositions came out. I'm going to paint this one differently, though. So even though we've got this sort of left off center tree stand, they will be hopefully different once I get the final color in. So I'm just going to apply wash. And in some cases, you know, being able to lift and move some of this dark color is going to be an advantage. That's going to be something that I can use. I just have to be careful. So I've got sort of a red iron oxide and some uh, azo orange. It's a very burnt orangey mixture which i'm putting on very faintly and i want to make sure i leave some of these little bright textural spots that just that's nice uh it it looks like a little rock texture there and if i'm careful i don't brush too hard I've got a soft brush i can glaze over some of these washes without disturbing it too much Maybe here I will just smooth out texture in places. Just sort of close up some of those gaps where I don't want them. But see, I've got some nice ones here. Little bright textural marks. I don't want to cover those. 
I am just barely kissing the paper with my brush. This is, uh, of course, a silver brush, black velvet, number four. It's a very, very soft brush, so it's not lifting a whole lot of that. Down here where we have really heavy pigment, though, if I brush it a little bit, it lifts. Let's move on to this one. We'll let that dry. And I think this one is actually in a lot of ways going to be easier. And we don't have to worry about loosening the paint at all. All right. Well, for this one, I'm going to use, uh, actually, I think I'm going to use the same sort of oranges and blues. But as with any line and wash, I usually start out, uh, I want to keep the washes light because you already have so much dark, contrasty areas. So. See, I'm doing more. I used a, a small round brush here, but you see, I'm doing more with uh, the square of this brush. I'm, I'm letting that make some shapes over here. I couldn't really do that here, you know, for fear of of loosening all that up. So that really kind of plays into that part of the process too. I like getting these chisely marks in here. I'm gonna leave uh, these bright areas for texture. Maybe that's some underbrush or stone, I don't know. And we'll be de detailing a few things down here, but I'll tell you, this is going to be a simpler one to paint, I think, in a lot of ways. All right, this is dry. <laughs> we could leave it like that. I mean, that's fairly abstract right now, uh, but I'm going to make it a little more realistic. So let's work on some of these trees.
you know, and you may ask, well, what am I looking for when I detail down here? I'm just looking for uh, shapes that I can complete that the eye will see as rather than partial and fragmented will now see as more complete. And a lot of times that just involves a shadow. It may, it may just be as simple as giving them a bottom, like a bottom facet, a bottom edge that's, that's shadowy. see something that you want to fill in you know make more solid maybe it's too busy maybe you don't want a detail right there well that's do it you want contrast not just in value but you want contrast in color like warm and cool and you want contrast in calm and busy you know little areas of detail and little areas or maybe bigger areas where it's calm suggestion a lot of times is not just simplification, but it's it's drawing lines or something that start to hint at a shape or start to hint at value, values and then stop and they let your eye fill in the rest. A lot of times that's what suggestion is in art. Well, for now, I think I'm pretty happy with both of those for different reasons. This one was uh, definitely easier, a little more intuitive to paint. This is really dark and kind of, uh, you know, maybe if I'd have used a different color, it's a little bit uh, grungy looking, but the look is okay. I mean, it's not bad. And I'm glad I did it. That's what experiments and studies are for, especially when you're doing uh, studies of particular media. But uh, this. It it just opens, and this is the reason I do these, uh, this just opens new doors, new ways of approaching work, whether spontaneous or painting to a planned composition. It doesn't matter. It just, it just adds to some of the ideas for getting your work to look more organic. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I think we're going to do two more, and that will be on Patreon. Patrons, look for those. Everyone else. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you, patrons, for your support of this channel. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.